Welcome to Queen's College uh, Summer Session Lab number four, Coplanar Forces. We're going to uh, be studying forces in static equilibrium, where static, of course, means it's not moving. Equilibrium means the sum of the forces are equal to zero. Uh, coplanar simply means that all of these forces are going to be in one plane, which means we have an essentially two-dimensional problem. What we're going to do is use this as a coordinate system. This is graduated in uh, degrees around the outside. Don't know if you can see it, but I'll give you some close-ups in a bit. The zero to 180 line is going to be our x-axis. So this is positive x. And uh, 90 to 240 is going to be our y-axis. So this is positive y. The unknown mass is hanging somewhere in the third quadrant. We won't know where exactly until we've done something about equilibrium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put masses on each of these pulleys to balance that mask. Why does that work? Well, if I were to pull this, put a force here, until this was in equilibrium, then this force vector would equal this force vector, and it would be in equilibrium. Unfortunately, neither of those vectors are on our coordinate system, and in all the problems you're going to do, we want it to be on the coordinate system. How do we do that? Well, we use trigonometry. We decompose the vector, into its components on the x and y axes. So this is going to be a positive x component. This is going to be a positive y component. And this is going to be our force unknown force vector. So my job now is to put masses on these positions until we're in equilibrium. These are the masses I'm going to use. Let me get it out of the way. And we'll get started here. All right, so it's a good start. It's not completely in equilibrium. I need more mass over here. Let me put another mass here. Stop it from moving around. Still not really enough. Let me put another one. And Maybe one here. Not one here. That didn't work. That's too far. So maybe I want another one here. And that's pretty good. It'll bounce around a little bit till these things stop swaying, but that's okay. So I'm going to show it to you in a minute with close ups, but for now, this is in. Uh, translational equilibrium. The sum of the forces are zero and it's lined up with our coordinate system. So let's talk about how this works as far as the uncertainty goes. The masses we're going to measure using the same scale we have in the previous laps uh, and you already know the uncertainty of that. So that takes care of the mass. We know it to reasonable precision. So now we're talking about the angles here and the fact that how exact are we about lining? This is co that this is making sure that this is concentric. Clearly, I have to have some uncertainty in there. The question is how much? Where does it show up? It doesn't change the masses, but it does change the angle. And it must change the angle only a very small amount. But still, there's uncertainty there. And there's uncertainty in reading these angles. They're divided up into uh, degrees. 
by our uh, previously learned methods, we would divide that up by 10, estimate where the angle is exactly, and we would assign an uncertainty to it. So the uncertainty of this, the space here is big, we should be able to do plus or minus 2 degrees, 0.2 degrees, uh, but because of this, that's not clear. Uh, so I would estimate that we would have to go to 0.5 degrees. So you're going to measure the angles here to the angle plus or minus 0.5 degrees. So what else could add uh, complications here? The pulleys. Because this is static equilibrium, the mass in rotational energy of the pulley doesn't mean anything because it's not moving. So the pulleys don't do anything except change the direction of the force. The forces are all coplanar. They're all in one plane, so we don't have to worry about uh, components in the third direction. So we have all our elements in place. So now you want your finger on the pause button and a piece of paper at hand because I'm going to let you measure those angles. Just let me check. I want to adjust this ever so slightly. Okay, and now we're ready. <laughs> well, we'd be ready if this had stopped rotating like that. So close your eyes so you don't get dizzy. And there you can see that it's not touching anywhere and is reasonably centered on that post. Here. Can you read that? Not really. You know what? I'll take pictures and show. I'll put them in the Google Doc. So this is at zero degrees. This is at 90 degrees. This is positive x. This is positive y. And the sum of these two equals this one. Now your job is to take the uh, angles that I'm going to give you and the masses that I'm going to give you in a table in the Google Doc and calculate what that mass is. Don't just start using your calculator and cal calculating mg, the weight for each of these things. Write down an equation, the sum of the forces is equal to zero, what forces are those? So that we can then uh, see what cal calculations you can make, what cancellations you can make, and you can find that you can easily uh, discover the mass of that unknown mass. The uncertainty you're also going to calculate. Calculating the uncertainty of trigonometric functions is straightforward, although the explanation requires a little more math than you guys are probably happy with. Look at the uh, summary that the department supplies, and if you have problems with it, ask questions. And that's it for this apparatus. We're going to use another apparatus to measure that same mass uh, twice more, and then you'll average them together, and then we'll compare them with the value that we get off of the scale. Uh, give me a minute, and I'll be back. Welcome to part two. This is the other setup we're going to use. We're going to use this one twice, and we have three values to uh, check. Um, those are called tension protractors. Uh, this is vertical, um, but our plane is now vertical as well. So it's still coplanar forces, just two dimensions. What I'm going to do is set these up uh, to prepare them to measure. I'm then going to suspend the unknown mass between them. And uh, then we'll do some calculations. So first, let me take you in and show you how to set them up. So if I take the mass off of there, you can see that it's set to zero, that red arrow. That red arrow is re reading Newtons. You can see it 
at the bottom there, but it says newtons. And the divisions are 0.1 of a newton. And for angles, if I drop this down and get it to stop moving, We see that it's not quite lined up at 90 degrees, but if I do that, it's now exactly lined up at 90 degrees. And we're going to be reading an angle here, so any angle I read is going to be from zero horizontal down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So without it. You can see it's set up at zero. With it, not quite at 90. No, I am pretty much at 90. And as always, those are all set by eye, so there's some uncertainty involved. Let me set you down while I set this up. There we go. So there's my mass, my unknown mass, hanging between the two. Both are reading a force in newtons, a force vector, and uh, both are reading an angle. So on this side, I'm going to call it 1, and that side I'm going to call it 2. So get ready to write down the... Uh, the numbers for tension one. There you go. A little past a half. And the angle is just a hair pat but here before 60. See, I'm bouncing around there. That makes it hard to... There. Just a hair before 60. But you can see how much difficulty it is to read it because of parallax, which we've also talked about before. Here is the other one. Number two. Focus. There you see, it's a little bit higher than the other one. And the angle is right there. It would be right there if I could, there, 65 degrees. Okay, so you saw how much trouble you had reading those. Let me read them myself. And I'm going to say the angle for number one is 59.9 degrees. And the angle for number two is 65.2 degrees. Now I'm reading them uh, to the division, which is very tiny. So you have to think about that when you're deciding what the uncertainty is. Let's talk about the uncertainty. We already said what the divisions are here. This is divided in a tenth of a Newton. This is divided in degrees, and I've done my best to estimate them. You should look at it and think of it in terms of the analysis that I've now shown you three or four times, and decide what the uncertainty should be here for each of these. And then you'll you take those uncertainty in the measurements and you'll decide how they go through the measurements that you're going to do here in order to decide what that mass is. How do you decide what that mass is? 
all force questions have the same algorithm for solving them. You make a force diagram, a free body diagram. That's a point. It has a tension two in that direction. It has a tension one in that direction and gravity is pulling down on it. MG. And then you do this in two directions because of clearly there are two directions here. And in both directions, since this is not supposed to be moving, the sum of the forces have to be equal to zero. And you can use those two equations plus what you know about the tension to determine the mass of that object. And that's it. Now, the second one is going to be the same thing except I'm going to bring this way down. We're going to stop it from moving. And here you go. You read that one. That's two. I'm giving them to you backwards. Sorry. That's one. So that's tension one. The other one was tension two. And the angle for tension one is 81.7 degrees. And the angle for tension two is 33.5 degrees. Plus or minus whatever uncertainty you assign to those measurements. The equation that you write and you should write the equations. Do a free body diagram. Write down the equation. Sum of the forces equal to zero. List all the forces. Solve. And you should get a value for the mass. Once you have a mass, uh, you're good to go. You'll take the average of those three masses. They're the same object. It should have the same mass. And I'll give you in the Google Doc the exact mass of this measured on a scale for you to compare against. And that's it. Much simpler lab this week. You'll be happy to know. Uh, but I don't think there's anything I can give you to do at home here. So uh, you're kind of off the hook for that.